Striving for Light, not to be confused with its spin-off, is a top-down action RPG dungeon crawler set in a world of death and darkness, where only faint motes of light remain, scattered about the cursed lands. It tasks you with finding this light to forge humanity's future. It's a familiar and romantic premise wherein the protagonists battle figuratively and literally for the last tatters of hope. As a fan of all this poetically charged pontification on human nature, I was eager to play it, and hey, it has co-op too. Ostensibly, anyway. For full disclosure, this game is early access, but even by those standards, the local co-op is unbelievably confusing and broken. My roommate Nathan and I were sometimes able to control each other's characters, or rendered suddenly unable to attack, or teleported randomly across the map. And because we shared the same pool of health, this led to many quick and untimely deaths. Also, the game actually crashed on us at least once. These issues did clear up in single player, but co-op is an intended way to play the game, so I think it's fair to expect better than this. Anyway, when I did go in solo, I found things weren't too much better. Much like this title spin-off, there are too many mechanics piled atop mechanics piled atop yet more mechanics. Screens and screens of tutorial text and jargon awaited me, despite how relatively simple the gameplay loop is. You go into a dungeon, fight monsters who drop stuff, and you equip that stuff to your character. It's pretty standard fare, which is all needlessly obfuscated beneath layers of mechanical excess. This overfocus on complexity carries into the writing and world building. Somehow, nearly every NPC you talk to is unreasonably verbose, spouting out mountains of pained poetry. I understand the game is trying to build a mood, but when all your characters are this laughably loquacious, it has the opposite effect. It makes everyone feel identical, and the world becomes banal and suffocating. Lastly, I suppose, the combat itself is alright. The enemies are smartly designed so that each attack is avoidable, and the bosses strike a good balance between bullet hell and regular old fantasy brawling. But that just isn't quite enough for this sort of experience. Striving for Light wants to be a roguelike, it wants to be replayed again and again as you fight for higher scores, more unlockables, and richer loot. But as much as this hurts to say, it just isn't interesting enough and no amount of additional mechanics can make up for that.